Hey everyone, it's James here from the Dev Genie Academy, and in this week's episode we're going to be looking at a little bit more of optimization, a little bit of housekeeping of the engine that we've currently got. Because at the moment everything works fine, however there is a few things that we need to optimize. So as you can see I've commented out pretty much everything in the test game init method, and I've gone back to a basic grass block with a single cube, an ambient light, point lights and spotlights. And you don't need to copy all that example, this is just to show you and highlight to you what changes I'm making. Um, I'm also going to change this line here because I forgot to change this off screen. So the ink spot angle, I'm going to do that to scene manager, get spot ink multiplied by 0, 0.0, sorry 0 0.15, that needs to be not 0 0.05. Um, the spot angle is 2 and negative 2. And spot ink, I need to move that back to 1 as well. So again, you don't need to copy any of this code. But in this in this class we'll be looking at other things um, this one you might want to change instead of doing spotlight get point light position change it to get cone direction and um, we'll just stick with the one cone direction of y there we go and it's math dot sign of spot angle instead of cos there we are so that them three lines you might want to change yourself but everything else you should be okay with um, I've also got rid of the directional light and I've just got a basic directional light set up above it. So this is mostly going to be doing dealing with the lighting itself. Um, I also want to set my camera back into the default position of 0, 0, 0. And there we go. And same with the rotation as well. That's it. So if we launch that now we've just got a single cube and you can see there's a spotlight there, it's very faint, and that's because the ink, spot ink, is set to 0 0.05, not 0 0.15. So, first of all, in the Spotlight class, where we're creating a spotlight from another spotlight, I want to change this code entirely. It's okay, it serves a purpose, but it's just not quite how I want it to be. So, we're going to comment out that code, and then we're going to create a new point light by passing in the spotlight original point light a new vector 3f of the spotlight cone direction and then also zero for the cutoff I'll show you the reason why I'm setting cutoff to zero initially um, but we also need to fix something in point light here as well so if we go into point light and we need to have a constructor that takes in a point light so we've got color position intensity so yeah well what we need to do here is we do need to create another constructor so we can create that in the normal way but this time what we do is we pass just a single point light into it and we can just say a new vector 3f for the color so get color just pretty much what we've done in the spotlight already a new vector 3f for the position we need the intensity there and I'm not going to do the constant, the linear and the exponent, but there's a very clear reason why, because we're going to be coming back into the point later on and changing that. So for now, just put it at 1, 0, 0. So back in the spotlight, that should fix that error. We can get rid of that commented out code. So the reason why I set cutoff to 0 is if we did spotlight.getCutoff, that would cause the set cutoff function at the bottom here to be run twice. So we're basically doing math.cosine two times in order to do that. So to get around that, what we do is we set the spotlight dot get cut off initially to zero and then we can just use a set cut off at this point so again we just set that to zero back to what it was and then after that we can then just do this dot cut off equals spotlight dot get cut off so that way we're not doing that math dot cosine calculation more than once so as i said back into the point light and we need to first of all create a new class an inner class here and it's going to be called an attenuation and this is basically the reason why I didn't want constant linear and exponent changing in that function because we're going to be moving them into this class here actually not the intensity though, that intensity needs to stay where it is there we go, that's back so it's just the constant, the linear and the exponent and the constructor for that is fairly straightforward, it's just those three values so it's a float value of constant, a float value of linear and exponent and just a standard constructor uh, constant come on there we go linear and exponent 
There we go. And well, instead of recreating those, we've already got these down here. So let's just copy those out and paste them in here. That's it. And that also obviously brings us errors. So instead of having the three floats there, we're going to pass in an attenuation now. And we need to create an instance of the attenuation as well. Attenuation, that's it. And then it's basically just setting the attenuation there. And where we had the 100 in the previous point light, we can just recreate that with the standard 100. And the same for the function that we've just created as well. Um, but this time it's point like dot get attenuation which we haven't actually created yet. There we go. And now we can call that get attenuation function. So this is causing errors elsewhere in the code. Let's find out where they are. So the first one, actually they're both in the test game. So instead of doing 001 here, let's take those bits out. And let's create a point light attenuation of attenuation. And I, this one was set to 0, 0, 001. And then we just do point light dot set attenuation. So we copy those two lines that we've just created into the spotlight. And we can get rid of the redeclaration. And this one, I believe, was 0, 0, 0, 0.2f. There we go. Okay, so that's the constructor for the point light fixed. Uh, the next bit we need to fix is in shader manager. So where we've got the set uniform of point light dot get constant, we just need to put in the middle there of get attenuation, like so, there we go. And what we can also do while we're here in shader manager is where we've got those attenuations, we can append a a double t dot const. So what we're basically doing here by doing dot att dot constant linear and exponent. We're actually setting that to be a, a separate class in our GLSL code. So if we go into the entity fragment, what we need to do here now, instead of having these values inside of the point light, we now need to create a new struct and we're just going to call this attenuation as well. And then we just pass those three floats in there. Okay, there we are. And obviously we need to past the attenuation there. That's it. So that's going to cause three errors in the calc point light function. So that'll just be light dot attenuation dot constant dot linear and dot exponent. There we go. So that's the entity fragment sorted. If we now move into the terrain fragment, we need to basically copy the same thing again there. So let's just copy that structure and pass it into the terrain fragment. And let's just create the attenuation in the point light and fix those three errors we've got there. That's it. If I can get it in the right place, there we go. Okay, so that's the fragment files all set up and correct and ready. So back in the shader manager, I also forgot to do in the set uniform function, we've got those set up, but in the create uniform or create point lights uniform, I need to set those up there as well. So there we go. Now moving into the object loader class, in the function of load model, we're calling the create VAO bind indices buffer and the store data in attrib list. I just want to go through these these functions just because I think there's a there's a line that I'm missing in one of them. It's this one here. In the store data in attrib list, where we bind the buffer, we then create the float buffer and then pass the buffer into the buffer data. Just after buffer data and before the vertex attribute pointer, we need to add a new line in here. And that's GL20 GL enable vertex array or a vertex attribute array. And we pass in the attribute number. That line we need to add in. And um, also in the object loader where we're loading the texture, we need to add two lines in here. So after the pixel store i, we need to add in a GL text parameter i of a min filter and a mag filter. So that's GL, GL uh, sorry, it's GL30, GL text parameter i, and that's GL texture 2D, uh, GL texture min filter for this one, if I can spell it correctly, texture min filter. That's it. And that's just going to be then passed to a parameter of GL nearest. 
And if you copy that entire line, because all we need to do now is change the min filter to the mag filter, and that's everything we need to do in the load texture function. So moving on to the next fix. In the entity vertex, if we change the vertex normal from being a vector 4 to a vector 3, and also note in the frag normal we're normalizing the world position, which actually takes in the, in the position itself. It doesn't take in the normal. So if we copy that line and change the 1 to a 0 and the position to a vertex normal, that should give us the true fragment normal that we want to use. So just before we go ahead and run that code, in the spotlight, the reason why the light was so dim is the exponent needed to be set to 0 0.02. So if we go ahead and run that now, we can see very clearly that the point lights are moving and the spotlights are moving. We can also increase and decrease the lighting with a greater, with a better effect, basically, because before we were just changing the physical size of it, not the actual cone direction. So that's it for this episode. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.